<laughs> hey guys, it's Wahima. But just call me Wa. Melanated. <laughs> Welcome to my recap of 90 Day Fiance the UK. My name is Wa. And if you're new to my channel, I do recaps of relationship reality TV shows such as Love After Lockup, 90 Day Fiance, Sleeping Sister Wife, Love is Blind That One Time, Married at First Sight, If I Can Stand It. So you get it. And if you are all interested in that content, please go on ahead and subscribe to my channel. But don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to share on any social media platform that you deem fit. All right, today she has a guest, you guys, and you know that I'm in, I have been having guests this month. Um, and so we've got from across the pond, our brethren, our friends <laughs> <laughs> from the Lighty Day Fiance, we've got Robin and Michelle. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. This no, is an honor. Absolutely. Great. I yeah. love it. I love it. Thank you for being here. Thank we have like a crazy time zone difference. It is nine thirty eight here in SoCal, and there are full eight hours difference. So we had to find like a good time of the day that works for the both of us. And so thank you for taking your Sunday evening to chitty chat with me. That is a pleasure. It's, it's a nearly pleasure. vodka o'clock. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> All right. So um, without further, further ado, oh, actually, I wanted you to explain to the folk what your name means, because they might, like me, have thought that it was bloody and 90 mixed together, like bloody 90 day fiance. So you were like, bloody 90 day fiance, like make it a little Irish, bloody 90 day fiance, you know, fiance. But what is it? You want to take this one? No, you, you. Shall I do You're it? You're the as, Englishman. Oh, the, yeah. as the Englishman, yeah. it's up to me to explain. Um, yeah, no, Blighty is um, what we affectionately call Britain in Britain. Um, so we might say, you know, welcome back to dear old Blighty. Uh, <laughs> um, While that's... you have the Union Jack in your hand. See, I knew that. Yeah. You know, they, they yeah. call their flag Union Jack. I don't hey, know. Michelle, we don't have that. a name. No, we don't say that? No. Um, it's only a Union Jack if it's at sea. If it's uh, on a boat, yeah, yeah, oh, that's the it? nautical term. Otherwise, it's the Union flag. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but I mean, we don't Michelle, have sigils and stuff. It's not. We don't. We don't have a name for. There's no. Is there? There's not a name for the U.S. flag when it's on a boat, right? I I don't think so. I mean, I'm See? trying to think. I mean, stars and stripes, right? Yeah. <laughs> really. But even then, no, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been to a to a Fourth of July party or anything like that, and I don't <laughs> think I've ever been. At, I think I'm going to worry if somebody asks me to bring an American flag somewhere <laughs> to something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe not go to what whatever yeah. event that is. I was literally <laughs> just talking about this like a few weeks ago. I was I was. I saw something on Instagram that said, or maybe it was TikTok, that said if you if you're like you're walking down a street and you see nothing but American flags, like it's cause for concern. But if you're walking down the street and you see a bunch of different flags, like the Puerto Rican flag, the Dominican flag, like Belizean flag, or like you know UK, like you you see all the different flags, you're like, oh okay, okay, yeah, I'm picking picking up the vibe here. And then uh -huh. you see a bunch of American flags, you're like, oh okay, oh no no, wrong vibe, wrong vibe. And my friend. <laughs> friend was like oh my god that makes me so sad that that's your experience and like you know it does it doesn't mean that for me and I was like it's so interesting but I'm glad Michelle that you get like what, what that is yeah yeah <laughs> that so. makes me it, it's giving these colors don't run yes. you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> don't tread like... on me it's giving, <laughs> yeah, it's oh, giving we... I'm a rebel yeah <laughs> We but have yeah. the same thing here with the, uh, not the Union flag, but the but flag, the England of, flag. Yeah, the flag yeah. of St. George, which is white with a red cross. And if you see a street oh. full of those, then there's usually a pub at the end of the road with a flat roof. Um, <laughs> never drink in a pub with a flat roof. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, and no. a lot of people with very short haircuts that you should avoid. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, fair. what's oh, it's like the Confederate flag then. Yeah, well... Yeah, it's sort of become it, that. If the yeah. South had won. Okay. <laughs> <If> the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, I get it. At, at yeah. least I at least I feel comforted to know that other that that the UK has that 
faction too. Because it just oh, feels yeah. kind of crazy that the U.S. has that, especially when we're like a land of immigrants. So it's just like wild to me. But anyways, let's talk about the U.K. That's what we're here to do. Um, so let's jump right into our first couple. First couple that we're going to talk about is Emma and Hussein. And it is so sad to watch this person marry this other person and Oof. that person does not love this person <laughs> or even like even like right Th- this was one instance where they showed something in the teaser and normally in shows like this they'll show something in the teaser that we later find out isn't as bad as it looks right like it's a yeah. quote taken out of context or you know the the angle is wrong or it's a frankenbite whatever but this was worse. so much worse. <laughs> yeah. This was like my jaw, very little surprises me on these shows, but I was shocked at how bad this was. And he doubles down. Like, yeah. we, we've yeah. all been in rooms uh, where our phone goes off at really inopportune moments, right? It's happened to yeah. everyone, okay? Yep. But what you do is uh, throw your phone on the ground and stamp on it repeatedly. <laughs> At any cost and expense, so that it's quiet. Like, <laughs> like we've been to like plays, and someone's phone goes off in the crowd. Like, this is the time to say goodbye to your iPhone, right? You, <laughs> the one thing you don't do is answer it. You just wow. wow. I mean, but he really loves his mother, and he doesn't know about how Britons are, or Britons, uh, Londoners. No, that's the right like, term. Yeah, uh, Britons. He doesn't mm-hmm. know how Britons are, but if they don't love their mothers, that's not his fault. But he loves his mother and that he's was, just waiting for her to call was it his mother exactly also my thing is is put it on speakerphone say oh hello baby wait wait my mother okay mommy married like say that like do something to where it's like obvious that this is like a happy moment and you're happy and you could you know like something but all he's just like hello yes <laughs> okay uh-huh <laughs> And two places, one. <laughs> no, no, that is a matter of like he's just like, yeah, like he's just did... trying to multitask at work, like like it's a business call. Totally, <laughs> it didn't seem like a call from his mum at all. It seemed like someone ordering food from the restaurant he wants to open. Right? Yeah, it's like oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll have that ready in twenty minutes for you. It was, but I don't even think it was a work call. I think there's someone <laughs> else in his life. Um, I don't... Yeah. Yeah, and I suspect someone else he likes more, someone who's more his sight and his height and build and has just as good hair as him. Yeah. Um <laughs> who had to be included in that special day. Like but her patience was incredible. Like at what point do you go this isn't working? Like how desperate do you have to be to get to your destination that when like the bus is hanging off the side of a cliff you think oh they'll pull it back onto the road and we'll get there and it'll be fine like climb out the back smash the window and climb out the back yeah i just in my mind i just kind of thought she probably is now at the point in her mind of no return and just feels like terrible embarrassment and doesn't feel like she can pull back there's a whole camera crew here for her but i'm like girl we're not here to see you like succeed no. We're actually here to see it not happen and feel like, yeah, Emma, you did what's right for you and for your family and for your peace of mind. You can't bring this this person over. This man does not. He, has, I mean, it's not even about like his culture or his religion stopping him from being affectionate. There, nope. there I've nope. seen like when you think of um, uh, Omar and what's her name? Remember Omar was the uh, Avery. When you think of Omar and Avery, they didn't do anything overly affectionate, but you could tell that there was love between them. Oh, absolutely. And so it's like that, ex- that excuse of like, oh, I can't do it because of my religion is yeah. unacceptable. The guy was, guy was drinking a beer on that boat. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I su- yes. Mm-hmm. I, I suspect that most of the religious things are not a huge factor for him. I don't think you get to be that kind of guy in like, what, which city in, in Iran? Tehran. Is he is from Tehran, right? Yeah. I, I don't think you get to be that guy in Tehran if you're if you're kind of mainstream culture let's put it that way I think there's a reason why he wants to get out of that country and I think it's to live a very very different life 
Oh yeah, um, I think he wants to be in a country that has very long mirrors everywhere you go so that he can make sure that his hair and his outfit is perfect. He would like to continue working on his chest muscles. Um, he, uh, also, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, and I know it's like uncouth to do so because you want to accept everybody with however they present or what they're telling you, but I, I think that he's gay and that he is just trying to get out and he's chosen um, at least the, I mean, it's just, it's sad for me with Emma because I, regardless of Emma's choice with makeup, her overall demeanor is rather fabulous from wherever she's coming from. She's got her nails yeah. did. She's got her makeup, her outfits. I mean, not makeup, her jewelry, her outfits are really good. Um, I was a little concerned with the makeup that was being put on her face. And I was like, why don't we give her some more dimension? I don't know, Michelle, if you're a makeup person, but I, as the daughter is putting on that foundation, I was like, her skin is really red underneath her pink. Is there not a color correcting we could do to kind of like offset it to give her a, like a zhuzh? <laughs> I have so many thoughts. I am absolutely a makeup person. And I kept saying to Robin the entire time, I, there's not, I saw her daughter putting bronzer on her. Right. But like, you've got to use some of that. And she also does that horrible, like, tin man thing of putting huge swathes of like highlighter on under her eyes. So it makes the the dark circles look even worse. So she's done it before, where uh, she's put way too much makeup on and it, it has looked terrible. And with this, it wasn't I would have liked to see a false eyelash, you know, oh. just something, you know, just oh. pick a feature. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a brow? Can you do your eyebrows? Let me, this is yes. all she needs. Is her then, eyebrows done and some mascara and a little lint tip, uh, a little lip tint and a blusher. Yeah. Just something fresh, you know, not something that, and she, Kenzie's a beautiful girl. Yeah. We love beautiful. Kenzie because Kenzie's like yeah she's quite heavily made up but in a natural kind of way like she's actually she acts her age and that's really rare for girls on tv sometimes you know she's yeah. just really confident and comfortable and we think she's great um the other problem Emma has is uh she has what we call the Croydon facelift right so it's the hair which, <laughs> which is a particular like suburb to the south of London uh, where you know, it's kind of de rigueur. But the hair is pulled so far and so tight back into this like... Kimbali does the same thing yeah. on okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Happily Ever After. Yeah, yeah, it's... And the impression it can give with Emma is like she's being shrink wrapped. Like everything's <laughs> kind of stretched as if she's under a layer of plastic anyway. And if you're going to do that, then you need to paint some features back in, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's quite, quite a harsh look, um, even for, and I think for wedding day, you have to go as natural as possible. So those are my thoughts. There was, there was a missed opportunity to do some light sculpting, some light you know you're you're meant to have that glow and if it's not coming from within and i totally understand why it's not coming from within like if you told me <laughs> oh boy on our <laughs> if you didn't if the first thing you said to me on our wedding day yeah. wasn't like oh my god you're so beautiful yeah i would have just turned to my parents and your mom and gone i can't this isn't this right. Yeah. yeah. This Let's is not happening. Sack it off. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it It was so rude. And she, like, tries to say something. He's like, well, I'm happy. I'm happy. You're, uh, I'm fine. Why are you upset? I'm happy. And it's just like, <sighs> but you're, you're not happy. You're, like, not happy. And then you answer the phone in the middle of the wedding. And then, like, when she tried to communicate with you about it, you got defensive and upset. And I'm just like, how can you marry somebody who, when you try to tell them how you feel that you get defensive and upset. Unless Hussein is just upset at the way she speaks English to him, because I am. Yeah. You know, we all I'm, are. We all like, are. Like, uh, running, uh, affection, love, kiss. I'm like, that's not a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it's the adoption of, like, a uh, generic foreign accent as well. Yeah. Like, there is literally no one in the entire world that has that accent. No. It doesn't. <laughs> but it's the one you speak slowly, you put that voice on, and, and foreign people will understand you. Yeah, it's... It, it's clearly the most remarkable thing about her, I think, that she does. And I kind of warm to it. That's the thing. But 
she is clearly after love. He is after a business arrangement. I, I don't, a lot of people with the whole 90 day thing, they're like, eh, they're conning you. They just want a green card. They just want, and it's like, that's kind of fair enough. Like different people in different parts of the world see marriage very, very differently. Yes. And there's all kinds of different cultures. So when he says, I'm happy, it's like, yeah, I am comfortable with this business arrangement. Yeah. Right. I think that's what he's saying. I'm satisfied with my choice. Is yeah. yeah. He said. <laughs> this will deliver the results I require. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. and maybe he love her because I, I don't know if it's he's in love with her. Maybe he, you know, has a, a special. He's been talking to her for six years. I don't think that you could possibly talk to somebody for six years and not have some kind of warmth or emotional connection to them in some way. Like, maybe it isn't, you know, I want you to be my partner and spend the rest of my life with you. But like, I like hanging out with you. I like talking to you. Like, <laughs> that's my that's my British accent. It was good. Um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I rather like it, you know, so it's just like, maybe that's what it is. And he's like, we can open a business together. He's just fully thinking like, yeah. we could just have a business and like, I could do my shit at night uh, <laughs> with my other people. And if you wanted to have another friend, I'm going to say no, because as a Muslim man, uh, <laughs> you're not allowed to date other people i just i would hope that he would give her that option especially because he's gonna go to london or he's gonna go to the uk and lose his mind and i wouldn't be surprised if he wanted her to move to the big city so that he could lose his mind oh without doubt are you watching um the game of thrones show uh house of the dragon not yet not yet i'm okay. waiting for well, the whole thing to come out for anyone watching and i'll be very very careful not to spoil no but spoils. no spoils yeah. I kind of think that he would have gone for the sort of arrangement that we maybe saw in episode five. Are we saying? Yeah, yeah that he, might he'd have been, been down for that. But my concern for them is that small town life in England yeah. is very, very limited. Like when she said, um, and I'm not saying that people are closed minded or anything like that. Uh, because I've said that before and I've gotten in huge trouble <laughs> for it. So I'm not definitely not going to say that people who live in small towns have, um, you know, small minded tendencies sometimes they've on occasion. Had, they've had less exposure. They've had less yeah. exposure. To, so his life, his life is not going to be very easy. Yep. And she said herself about the village that she lives in, and it is a village that there's a place to get your nails done. There's a place to get drunk and that's it. And that's the truth for quite a few of the people on this show. You know, he's not going to be coming to London. He's not going to no. be coming to Manchester. You know, it's, it's going it, to be a this very. Is, it's Paul and Carini. It's like Carini having ideas. You remember that? Like she yeah. wouldn't be living in a trailer in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. This is yeah. not that they're going to be living in a no, trailer. No. She obviously has a really nice house, you know, but. But it's not the, the fantasy. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be that life. It's going to be going to the restaurant where she's a manager. And then after work, you go to the pub and there's probably, unless that is an authentic Persian restaurant, you are probably, he will probably be the only person in there who isn't English and from that town. Yeah, oh, great I life. forgot she worked at a public, a pu a per, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I forgot she worked at a Persian restaurant. Yeah. So maybe that's kind of how she met him, or maybe that's why he's like, oh, she understands me. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, they never really went into it, but on this show, they're keeping an awful lot of, uh, about how people met very smoke and mirrors. Oh, Things aren't that clear. Cloak yeah. and dagger, as you will. Yeah. Um. So... Then we've got uh, just the aftermath of the wedding and, you know, her being like, I have to go take a picture and smile at him. And then him not being not understanding when she's upset, it's just all this nonsense. And so she chooses to just, again, stiff up her lip it and be like, I'm going to let it go for now. We can talk about it later. It's like, girl, you can't talk about it later. Um, but we're going to talk about it later. And let's just have a good like after wedding on this boat. And so they wear all white and her, her, her and her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend and Hussein get on a boat and like, I guess, have a good time. They kiss a couple times and we're supposed to believe they're about to run off into marital bliss. Yeah. Um, world's but... worst Duran Duran video, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like the 80s never happened. Um, we thought the worst thing, uh, there were many bad things, was just the, the venue for that wedding. It's like, usually you'd get a room. 
this is like a kiosk in an yeah. airport lobby. It's the weirdest thing. Um, and then where they had the photos taken was like, there were these two empty planters on the side. It's like zero effort had gone into anything in any way. And I get it. It was all last minute for them. So I'm not sort of coming for them on that, but it was bleak. The is whole it, thing was bleak. Is that, um, I'm seeing that a lot uh, in weddings on TV. That sort of like where the, like uh, Jabri and Miona had this, where it's sort of like, it, it's like grass or feathers or something. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like that's, the that was interesting. The foliage art that on, would... on the paper background, yeah. But to be fair, that wasn't their no. first, uh, that wasn't their venue of choice, right? This was like, they went down the road, the, the, the music from Homeland started playing, all of these people come into the shot and they're on phones talking to this to try and figure this marriage out. And it's like, yeah. Cause you always get to talk to officials outside the building. Yeah. That was like, odd. Oh, I'll make a call. Cause he's so important. That was weird as anything. Yeah. Our th- that was really weird. Our theory about why that first place fell through and why they couldn't get a slot in the first month is because Stephen with a V from a previous season, <laughs> he, he filled the place with cats and, <laughs> and they're still trying to get those damn cats out of the building, uh, which oh is why God. no one can get married there anymore. I got in so much trouble for that episode, like for that little bit of season. I was talking about how there's just like all these damn feral cats running around and like I personally hate cats, right? So anytime- So do we. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any show and there's a cat in it or like a cat on the counter. I'm like, first of all, if you have a cat, I can't eat from you. So I like to know who has a cat in my office so that I know if they ever bring food that I can't eat the food that they bring because most likely they haven't stopped their cat from climbing on all all the things, right? right. Um, but I always get shit for that because people are like, why you can't be, I have a cat, you can't be mean to me. And I'm like, first of all, it's jokes, but not really. <laughs> Um, but also like, this is, this is what it is. Like you love your cat. That's great. And I'm just not gonna eat at your house. Like, that's all it is. And we just like live, we'll just, you know, have that yeah. balance. But I talked You'd feel about if, 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 if you had rats, they would feel the same way. Yeah. And cats yeah. are just slightly larger rats. Yeah. I, think they're, they're, yeah, I don't appreciate positive discrimination that's cat related. No. <laughs> <laughs> so like. Helpful. I got when I started just talking about feral cats and how they're weirdly feeding all the feral cats. I mean, people came at me. They were like, wow. "In Turkey, the cats are well taken care of. The community takes care of the cats. They're not feral." And I'm like, "Okay, just because you all put food out for the cats doesn't mean they're not feral." <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and also like, <laughs> if they were already well fed, why the hell would they want to hang out with Stephen? the only reason any creature on this earth could possibly want to hang out with steven is raw survival (laughs) he had to trap them (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. i can't believe he brought those cats to the wedding that's like the the most bananas thing that ever happened anyways let's get back let's get back to this yeah yeah yeah. so um (laughs) so that's a good one that is because of the cats i think that that turkey well obviously turkey is just like a place where people go to get married so that they can like do a spousal visa or whatever right it seems like it's the it's what happens yeah. and i just think that it you know it's kind of like maybe uh, one of those drive through wedding venues in in uh, las vegas where there's a couple of them and sometimes one of them is more busy than the other yeah. and yeah. so they just found a new one and the way they were so upset i mean it's just like She's crying in the car because they can't get married, and he's just like angry. <sighs> they put on a lot of airs for this to happen. Um, what did you think of the uh, the Marvel style post credit sequence? Describe did you get that? No, I didn't. Oh, there's a, a little kind of like a postscript. I wonder if it's aired differently in the states. That'd be really fascinating. So, like, the show ends, and then. Emma comes back on screen and talks about their wedding night. Did you oh, guys I not did. get that? I yeah, got okay. it. Yeah, I did yeah. get that. Um, yeah. I, I also, was this the season finale? Yeah, yes. we, we think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No idea if there's a tell-all or anything like that. Um, I oh. suspect not. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm well. glad we got to talk before the season finale. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. So I did see her say that, and I didn't believe it for one second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it either. I mean, I I think that 
something that doesn't exist in America or doesn't exist kind of countrywide that does exist in England. And you will know this while from, from your love of um, period pieces, English period right. pieces, me, uh, which I share as well, of course, um, is this sense of your sense of pride and your sense of politeness are so strong that you will literally do anything to avoid embarrassing someone, being impolite to someone, causing someone else inconvenience. Right. That culture runs so deep in this country and it is okay. so, um, it's so pervasive even still. And it, and it goes through all different social classes. So whether you're, you know, upper middle class nobility, whether you're working class, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So that sort of, that sense of shame that Emma would have had would have been enough, even if he had sort of told her, uh, just so you know, we are about to get married. I don't love you. Um, I'm talking to my personal trainer in the middle of the ceremony and, you know, he's been sending me pictures of himself. She would still have gone through with it because that deeply ingrained sense of failure, the, failure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the it's, fear of like public ridicule or. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. yet she's done this show, which is, you know, I mean, look, they've only been on it like halfway through, but it's been a good six or seven weeks of what has felt like public ridicule really yeah. I feel for I actually really feel for her and we like her right yeah yeah I like her too and, like I yeah. again the fact that she is somebody I, listen I'm vain in the fact that I want all of my cast members to come ready for tv and I feel like her outfits yeah. and her hair and her nails <laughs> was ready for tv <laughs> so I like her it just I'm like she's she's the she's a girl like she's lives in a village but she doesn't look like she lives in a village and and I I could be just like thinking about what I think village life is like and be completely wrong. But what I'm saying is like, I would not go, Oh, you're from a small town in, in the North of, of, of England. Like I would think you're from London is how fashionable she was. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think that's fair. I mean, she was definitely trendy. I don't know if I, I feel like, and I, this isn't me being the body shaming police. But just by nature of being on camera, I personally would have a hard time wearing like a, a sheer white play suit without Spanx underneath because mm -hmm. you can see the panty lines and everything. That's mm -hmm. to me, that was that's something that was an oh, issue again and again. Yeah, like you yeah. could always see her underwear. Well, my issue about that is that he called her and said that she was fat and ugly right oh god i forgot that, about I mean, that remember like yeah. it's so easy to no. forget like that no, was kind i didn't of forget i remember that <laughs> yeah that was skated over right but that was grotesque and about one of the worst things i think i've ever seen on one of yeah, these yeah that shows. was really cruel so i was surprised that perhaps she didn't do kind of what you're saying because he's so kind of such a body fascist but yeah hey, yeah yeah i mean what? yeah i listen unfortunately you, you you would i would have to be going to a red carpet event to put spanks on and i even i can i know my panty line is out and i'm just like you about to see this line or you know <laughs> you're just gonna have to see this line uh because i can't i can't spanx it's just against my religion spanx yeah um but let's move on to uh, the next call let's let's you have anything else you want to say about them no, no. No, although I would very quickly like to get your thoughts on Taylor. Um, we think he's an imaginary friend. Uh, we're not sure that anyone else can see him. You know the guy, like, perhaps Kenzie's, Kenzie's friend? friend. You yeah. know, the guy who's, like, always there, but That's, doesn't Isn't that her boyfriend? The blonde? We're not sure. We're not sure. My suspicion is, I, I've always wanted, like, Kenzie to look at the camera and go, can anyone else see him? Because we're not sure he's really. Yeah, there. nobody ever talked to him. No one yeah, ever thought to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely nobody cared about his opinion no, at all. But he was in it so much. Like you often yeah. get these kind of side characters and stuff, but guys in like most of the scenes. He never yeah. said a word. It, yeah, so, it, was, it was funny. He was saying he just wasn't mic'd. They just was like, "Well, we don't have enough mics for you." 
We only bought, <laughs> we only bought four, three mics, so <laughs> we're on a budget. Um, I think I want to move on to Richard and Kathleen. Um, All right. Because, Robin, I just want to know what you think about Richard in general. Um, I mean, I obviously know because I've listened to the, your podcast, but I want you to say it here. <laughs> so... so uh have we both spoken of Richard we've both spoken of Richard right am I wrong am I right yeah yeah we interviewed him yeah no not us though but uh but, but Bois has yeah no yeah yeah he was on yeah. one of your um yeah. lives he popped into one of your lives yeah he popped into one yeah. of yeah. my lives yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I just want yeah that's what I um so we both experienced him in, in the in the hairy flesh um <laughs> and, look we like Richard. It's the I honest like truth, right? Yeah. I don't want to like Richard, <laughs> what, what, but I do like him. What I feel is that he's got some growing up to do. And I think his sense of humor is like anchored in a particular flavor of British culture from the mid nineties. We had this culture of, of laddism um, where men were kind of lovable rogues, but it was all very misogynistic. And you, know, you look back on it, you're like, <laughs> Right. But most of us and, you know, I'm, I'm I'll put my hands up and say that I said a few things in the 90s that I would look back on and be like, that is not OK. But I kind of evolved and moved on. Richard never has. He just oh, never it's has. a thing. It's yeah. called ladism, like yeah. one of the lads. OK, yeah. I love yeah. it. Um, Laddish so behavior. Yeah. OK, 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 great. I thought that Rich, I knew that what Richard do, was doing, he knew was untoward like he knew was wrong i thought he was just a literal little character that he was mm -hmm. like this is my character i didn't know it stemmed from like a, a little a little way of being or a movement or whatever from the 90s that's so interesting and it makes so much sense because i you know i looking at richard he's a handsome fella like yeah, looking at definitely. his face you know and like i i like the way that he um he I mean, obviously his misogynistic side is annoying. Um, and um, honestly, if I were Kathleen, I wouldn't be able to date him because of that. But I would be able to be his friend and see him like once a month. I would go yeah. to a quiz show and yeah. support him. But I, I wouldn't necessarily like hang out with him for too long because it's just too problematic. That's what mm -hmm. it is, is that he's problematic. And he yeah. is unapologetically, unapologetically problematic. And it's just like, nah, I can't. That's not the way the world is moving these days. And you're going to get in trouble and I'm going to have to just be like, well, mate, you did, you said what you said, all yeah. the best, you know, um, I was but... waiting for, where was the redemption art? That's all. I, like all season. I thought that there would be a moment when he, when, it, when he would go, Oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't, but you know what? That isn't Richard. He's not going to do it. He kind yeah. of doubles down on this stuff. And I almost admire that too, in a weird way. Like he's not caving into sort of pressure, but it's not my sense of humor. Let's put it that way. And it's not, it's not mine either. And there are things that he's said that are indefensible. Yeah. Um, you know, certain acronyms and things like that. Yeah. But having, rough. having gotten to know Life. him a bit, you know, outside of the show, he really is a really kind yeah. and generous person who really cares about the people in his life, who really loves his son, who is ultimately a lover and not a fighter. Like he is yeah. not somebody who is going to go to some like men's rights rally mm -hmm. and be the keynote speaker. Like that is, it's, it's so not who he is. And it's a shame that um, you can't sort of, that he can't be kind of like talked out of doubling down on that. But I, I could say for sure that, you know, he's a, he's a lovely person and he's got yeah. a really good genuine heart and he genuinely wants to be loved. Yeah. I think and America I, you... Sorry. You sure? I, I think Americans will relate to like, it, there's a Ricky Gervaisness, right? You know how like Ricky Gervais has made his name by making very off color kind of jokes, right? It's more There's like the of character that. that he played, I yeah. think, rather than Ricky because Ricky Gervais himself is transphobic and we don't like that. Well, so. that's true. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Is he? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. Yeah. All no. your heroes. Get off right? the Gervais train. That is not a nice man. 
No. No, I love that man. Um, no, I, well, so you're talking about Ricky Gervais and maybe in the office that, cause uh, the Ricky Gervais that I have not, not the transphobia part of it. That's like, yeah, but the, the ladism or the saying things, I feel like, I don't know, yeah. a lot of the Ricky Gervais stuff, I, it resonates with me. I haven't heard any transphobia and like Derek, I love that show. And I love this, sh- the other show that he created about the man who like lost his wife and it's just like really sad. Um, but any, anyways, like Richard to and, me, and- huh? No, 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 go ahead. Richard to me is you could see the lovable side of him and the the lover side of him but then he just has to like compound it with a shit sandwich like you see it and then he's like I don't take any responsibility for the distance between us it's all on her and I'm you know I want a ma- woman who gives me a sparkle in my belly and a twinge in my pants and it's like Richard we didn't need that like, that's not what we needed from you in this moment. Like, we needed you to, I just wanted to see the sentimental side of you and to be like, I'm really missing her. And, and maybe things that I did over there, I took it a little too far. And I'm sad that this is the outcome. But I've now learned and like, I'll go into my next relationship, trying to maybe have less of a WIFE situation and more right. of a just you know, regular, what I, I don't know. That's what I wanted from him. So from, from my uh, uh, viewers, Kathleen um, isn't talking to Richard, you guys. So it's been a couple of weeks and Richard is um, filming and he's very sad because he says that, you know, she has been very distance with distant with him. And so he goes to meet a friend and for whatever reason, when they're filming in the UK, the weather is lovely. So he's outside sitting, having a brew uh, with his mate and shows his mate the, um, the text message and Kathleen basically says, I'm really sorry, Richard, but uh, my feelings have changed and I can't, I can't do this or something to that. Something like my feelings have changed. And the friend's like, Oh no, that's this. No, that's the end. That's actually the end of this. This is a, like, of she's broken up with you. And you can see his eyes welling up and you know, that he's just, he wants to be loved. And then they do the grossest thing. You guys, they just, they just have like a three second shot of his foot. And I don't, <laughs> I don't want to see a man's toes. It's his camel toe. <laughs> it literally is. It's because when it him literally is his tat- camel toe. When <laughs> they got tattoos on their toes of like a camel king and queen, and it's just like, it's just so sad um, that they showed us his feet. But it's just so sad the whole situation. <laughs> and um, what did you guys think? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't the ending that I wanted for for him i think and robin feels the same way i think what we were looking for was that sin and redemption arc rather than a sort of doubling down again of this this kind of cartoon villain twirling the mustache you know that he's with the crown on and yeah we and can all do without that, the crown you yeah. know like it, i i felt like we got cheated out of um the person that we've been talking about who he who he really is you know and yeah. the the sensitive part of him the vulnerable part of him and i'm and i'm sad for that i'm sad that the audience didn't get to see that and yeah. i'm sad that he didn't get to really show more of himself and that he made that and, and without like showing the wizard behind the curtain i'm sad that the people that make the show hadn't built up enough of a relationship with Kathleen that they couldn't persuade her to go on camera and right. just yeah. tie this off in yeah. some way. Right. Like yeah. usually if you're making a show like this, part of your role, your job, and I've done it is to. Make... Robin used to be a TV producer just so yeah. people know. Um, you've you've got to have those relationships. There should have been someone local there that could have just talked her into it. Um, not in a bad way, but like you kind of owe it to anyone watching the show just to give your side or something. But literally for the line to go dead, I guess we all went through what Richard went through, which is just cut off, plug pulled. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that on a TV show before. It Maybe, maybe it's even more resonant for that reason. Like we, we didn't get the, the closure and he didn't get the closure, but it's a weird way to show a tv show i think not to give the audience any closure it's like a show getting axed like at the end of the second season or something and the writers didn't know so they didn't tie up all those loose ends it's just yeah 
yeah, they this well, so when it when that happens in the U.S., they usually give us some kind of words on the screen mm -hmm. that explain like you know producers reached out to Kathleen and Kathleen did not want to be part of the show or whatever. Um, but usually, whenever the foreigner kind of does that, I always assume like at that point they're done because at least in the U.S. they don't pay the foreigner to be on the show, right. and so it's like especially if the foreigner is getting a lot of hate online. Or there are, you know, other mitigating circumstances where they're just like, I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not going to take any more time out of my life to tie yeah. up anything for y'all. You know, when you were here, you didn't treat me well or like whatever. So that's part of my thought, too, is like if, if they didn't want to pay Kathleen for her time and she truly yeah. was wanting to move, move forward from this relationship and it was hard and to like then break up online somehow um, or on camera would have was difficult and I could see it happening but I think the producer should have written something like hey we reached out um, Kathleen is not interested in, in contacting or, or whatever and I just feel bad because this is a four-year relationship so even though she broke it yeah. off with him I think that it was a hard choice for her to make um, and yeah it, we don't it know it. yeah yeah we don't know and the worry is that it makes it look like she was you know as is the ongoing narrative with these things she's a scammer in some way oh, she wasn't I really committed and, i never yeah. thought that it had been four years he had had questionable behaviors he had said some crazy things in front of her friend like he, that wife thing he said that in front of her friend yeah and like he embarrassed her in front of her friend like that is a huge thing like i i couldn't date somebody who like came in front of chris and just was like yeah i just want her to like pick up my socks he told too many people in the philippines that he wanted this woman to pick up his socks. But also the next thing is that she was going to go there on a worker's permit. So it's not like, what is this wrong reason? Like she was going on over there on her own volition, nothing to do with him and his way of getting her there. So that any, if anybody has those thoughts, they are racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, definitely. So like no hate really from us for, for for Kathleen I mean I don't know I don't know what to think of her really I feel sorry for Richard I do think he loved her I do yeah. think he genuinely did love her I don't think that this was a fake relationship for TV at all uh but I think he'll be all right he strikes me as someone who'll bounce back Michelle yeah. any, anything else <laughs> no I I think um yeah I feel I feel for both of them I think it it's really something to invest four years in a long distance relationship that's so far long distance. And particularly, I always think it's so hard when you meet each other's families and then you're a part of that family for four years and then you never see them again. Like that's really, that's yeah. tough. Yeah. 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 I think so. All right, you guys. So that's it for me and Belighty Day fiance, Michelle and Robin. Um, to hear the rest of my thoughts on these couples, uh, I'll, I'll put up a live and we'll, we'll chit chat in person. So thank you so much to my guests for meeting up with me. Um, and you can find them. Tell, tell them where you, they can find you. So we are at Blighty Day, B-L-I-G-H-T-Y-D-A-Y on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Blighty Day Fiance is the name of our podcast. You can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, we do put them up on YouTube, um, but very few people listen to just, you know, audio things, I, I suppose. But but we do have some people. Yeah, we have some yeah. subscribers. Yeah, we've got yeah. some subscribers on YouTube. So <laughs> if you don't want to pull your phone out of your pocket, right? Or you might be watching this on a phone. If you don't want to change what you're doing, don't worry. You can find us on YouTube as well. That's fine. Perfect. If, if you did want to do it in a podcast app, that would be really good too. <laughs> all right you guys so uh thank you guys so much for joining me and we're going to continue our conversation but for those of you guys who are watching i'm just going to skip over and talk about the last two couples okay um so remember to be you be true and find your place bye <laughs>